Okay, so in this uh, lecture, we are going to uh, talk about uh, cyclic groups. So before I start with what are cyclic groups, let us define some terms required in this topic. So let us write the definition of the set S is equal to set of all elements which are of the form A raised to N, where N belongs to Z. Okay, this set is called as a cyclic set generated by element A in the group G. Okay, so the set is a cyclic set generated by A in a group G. And this set will be denoted by what? The set will be denoted by like this. We'll use this V brackets and write A inside it. So uh, G is a group, then this set S is just not a set, but it actually becomes what? It actually becomes a subgroup of G. So we will first prove that that the set S which is the collection of all powers of A those powers are positive negative and zero powers with this set S which is denoted by this forms a subgroup of G this forms a subgroup of a group G. Okay, so what is this set? Now let us see. So if I draw a picture, of the set, so G is this group. And I'm going to collect all powers a, a square, a cube, a raised to 4. Now this is mean what, what is a square? a square is a star a. Okay. Remember g is a group with respect to operation star. a raised to 0, a raised to minus 1, a raised to minus 2, a raised to minus 3 and so on. I'm going to collect all elements which are positive or negative or zero powers of a and there are some other elements which are not powers of a so the elements that i'm showing outside they are not powers of a every element need not be a power of a so i'm going to collect only those elements which are powers of a and that set is called as what yes okay now we want to show that this particular set is a subgroup so s is the collection of all powers of a so they can be positive negative or zero so now if i go for the closure i will pick up two elements so let x and y belong to the set s so there is x here somewhere x and y if x is in this set then clearly x must be some power of a so x is a raised to k for some k because every element of s is power of a right so k is an integer similarly y is also belonging to s so this means y is also some power of a so y is a raised to m for some m where m belongs to z what is x star y x star y is nothing but a raised to k star a raised to m 
which is equal to what which is a star star k times a will be multiplied with itself starred itself k times starred a star a m times so this is k times and this is m times so this means a is in all how many times a star a star a will be k plus m times and this is nothing but a raised to k plus m okay so this is a raised to k plus m this means that x star y is also some power of a and if an element is some power of a this means that element must belong to the set s because any element of s is what it is some power of a so x star s belongs to s so what we started with we started with x and y in s and now we have proved that x star y is also in s so this means s is closed with respect to the operation operation star associativity i will not check okay for subgroups we don't need that now who is the identity element of this particular set that's what we want to check so if i take any element x in s okay what element should i multiply so that x star identity will give me x again so if x is in s this means that x is some power of a for some k because the power is an integer so k belongs to z then a is to k should be multiplied by what element so that i will get a is to k again because x is a is to k and this means that if i choose e equal to a is to 0 then this will mean that a is to k star a is to 0 is a star a star a k times star a is to 0 0 times so this is a is to k this is k times okay and therefore a is multiplied by itself how many times it is multiplied by itself k plus 0 times correct and what is k plus 0 times it is k times so you get that this a is multiplied with itself k times so this means that a raised to k star a raised to 0 is a raised to k and this means that a raised to 0 acts like an identity of that particular set so if i go in the picture back you will see that this a raised to 0 that i've drawn the picture this a raised to 0 is actually the identity of this particular set so a power 0 is nothing but identity now we will go for the inverse so third is inverse does the inverse exist so i will take x in the set s and i want to find x dash such that that x dash should also be in s the inverse should also be in s such that x star x dash will become identity the identity of the set is how much it is a raised to zero so it is x star x dash should be a raised to zero so x is in s this implies that x must be of the form a raised to k for some k in z So this means that a is to k star x dash is equal to a is to 0. So what should be the element x dash? So I will choose x dash smartly as x dash is equal to x raised to minus k. Why? Because, I'm sorry, x dash is equal to a raised to minus k. Therefore, a raised to k star a raised to minus k will give you what? a raised to 0 because k times and minus k times that will go away and you will get a will be equal to 0 see I, i'll show you this calculation 
a raised to k star a raised to minus k is how much it is a raised to k it is a star a star a k times star a inverse a inverse a inverse again k times and what is this equal to this will become what this will become identity again in the next step this the next a in a inverse will become identity and the last a with the last a inverse will become identity so this will this is the calculation which will give you that a power k star a power minus k is equal to identity okay so this means that all the three properties one two and three are now giving me that the set s that with respect to the operation star what was the set s the set s was the set of all a power n where n belongs to z which is all positive negative and zero powers of that a this forms a subgroup of g and therefore the theorem is proved now once this set s is uh, proved to be a subgroup so now we will call that as a cyclic subgroup generated by set a right so this notation will be what will be the cyclic subgroup generated by which element will be generated and this is a subgroup we have just now proved that this is nothing but a subgroup of a group g okay now what happens is that suppose i am working in a group and i pick up an element a and i start calculating the powers of a a a star a a star a star a a inverse a inverse star a inverse which is a raised to minus 2 and so on a raised to 0 a raised to 0 is what a raised to 0 is identity right and i will start collecting all the positive and negative powers of a okay and i will start collecting them right but sometimes it happens that this set which is like this s this state set as i go on increasing the powers this state set starts to expand itself it starts getting bigger and bigger and a point comes that this set completely becomes what it completely becomes equal to g okay means the all the powers of a exhaust all the elements of g they eat all the elements of g and therefore any element that i take in g suppose x is in g okay then that element x becomes some power of that a and if such a thing happens that this set no more remains to be a small set like this but this set starts increasing and it finally becomes what it becomes complete g in that case this group will be set to be a cyclic group okay and who is the generator of that cyclic group this a is the sole generator of that cyclic group right so let me define what is a cyclic group and then we will see some examples and you'll clearly understand what is a cyclic group so what is the definition of a cyclic group if g is a group and g is generated by one single element in g that is g is the cyclic group generated by element by d is a cyclic group which is which is a collection of all a raised to n n belongs to z that is g is cyclic group generated by a for some a some a in g then g is called cyclic and g is called 
cyclic group and a is called the generator of that group okay let us see some examples so that the idea will be clear to you so example let me take a simplest group suppose i take g is equal to z6 addition modulo 6 okay now let us pick up one element so let us pick an pick up pick up an element uh, called as suppose i call 2 bar what is what is the cyclic group generated by 2 bar this is pronounced as cyclic group generated by 2 bar actually it's a cyclic subgroup generated by 2 bar now cyclic subgroup generated by a the definition is a raised to n where n belongs to z so this will mean that the cyclic subgroup generated by 2 bar will be equal to 2 bar raised to n where n belongs to z i will expand the set now what is what are the choices of n n can be 0 n can be 1 n can be 2 and so on n can be minus 1 n can be minus 2 and so on so this is the set 2 bar power n now look at z6 and try to answer this question so what is 2 bar raised to 0 2 bar raised to 0 is always identity who is the identity of z6 the identity of z6 is 0 bar 2 bar power 1 bar is 2 bar what is 2 bar power 2 bar 2 bar power 2 bar is 2 bar plus 2 bar because the addition is operation is addition so 2 bar plus 2 bar is 4 bar what is 2 bar cube 2 bar cube is 2 bar plus 2 bar plus 2 bar plus 2 bar which is 6 bar and 6 bar is 0 bar and so on what is inverse of 2 in z6 inverse of 2 means what should i add to 2 bar so that i will get 0 bar so the inverse of 2 bar is 4 bar so inverse of 2 bar is 4 bar dot 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 so what i understand is that this all infinite set actually is nothing but a finite set and it contains only three elements what are the three distinct elements in this set the three elements in this set are zero bar two bar and four bar so this means that this cyclic subgroup generated by two bar is equal to zero bar two bar and four bar right let us now calculate what is the cyclic subgroup generated by three bar so the cyclic subgroup generated by 3 bar will be 3 bar raised to 0, 3 bar raised to 1, 3 bar square and so on, 3 bar inverse, 3 bar in inverse multiplied by itself two times. And now from the above calculation, you see that you really don't need to calculate the negative powers. If you even just calculate the power positive powers, your work will be done here. So here, it means that 3 bar is to 0 will be 0 bar will be identity which is how much identity is 0 bar 3 bar is to 1 bar is 3 bar 3 bar square means 3 bar plus 3 bar and 3 bar plus 3 bar is again 0 bar in z6 and i understand that this set what is 3 bar inverse 3 bar should be added with which element so that i will get 0 bar so 3 bar should be added with 3 bar itself. So inverse of 3 bar is 3 bar itself. And therefore this set contains only two elements. Namely it contains 0 bar and 3 bar. Right. Now let us calculate what is the cyclic subgroup generated by 4 bar. 
the cyclic subgroup generated by four bar will contain all the powers of four and that will be four bar raised to zero four bar raised to one four bar square so on four bar inverse and so on and this is equal to four bar raised to zero is identity which is zero bar four bar raised to one is four bar four bar square means four bar plus four bar and four bar plus four bar in z6 will become two bar and so on so i understand that what is four bar inverse four bar inverse is two bar because four bar plus two bar is zero bar so four bar inverse is two bar and therefore i understand that this set four bar cyclic subgroup generated by four bar is only three elements zero bar two bar and four bar observe that this set is the same as cyclic subgroup generated by two bar also which we have obtained above so cyclic subgroup by two generated by two bar will give you the same answer as cyclic subgroup generated by four bar so we have seen cyclic subgroup generated by two bar cyclic subgroup generated by three bar cyclic subgroup generated by four bar now let us calculate what is the cyclic subgroup generated by five bar so this is not going to be simple so let me write the powers of five bar i am not writing the negative powers now okay i'm just writing the positive powers five bar in five bar square five bar cube five bar raised to four and so on so this means five bar raised to zero is identity which is zero bar five bar raised to one is five bar itself five bar square is five bar plus five bar in z6 five bar plus five bar is 10 bar and 10 bar becomes four bar five bar cube means five bar plus five bar plus five bar which is 15 bar and in z6 15 bar becomes three bar five bar raised to four means 20 in z6 20 becomes two bar five bar raised to five bar raised to five fifth power will become 25 and 25 bar is in z6 is one bar and so on what is five bar raised to sixth power the sixth power will be 30 and 30 will again become what 30 will again become zero bar okay so this means that this list will start repeating itself then again i will get a five bar again i will get a four bar again i will get a three bar and so on so this means that this list is nothing but containing only what elements does it contain it contains zero bar it contains one bar it contains two bar it contains three bar it contains four bar it also contains five bar so this means that the cyclic subgroup generated by five bar is actually nothing but what is actually the complete set z6 so here you will see that the cyclic subgroup here you will see that the cyclic subgroup generated by two bar is not equal to z6 it is only a subset of z6 cyclic subgroup generated by three, three bar is also not complete z6 cyclic subgroup by four bar is also not complete z6 but cyclic subgroup by generated by five bar that actually becomes what that actually becomes complete z6 this means that this z6 is generated by a single element and that single element is nothing but is nothing but five bar so this means that if i could find one element which generates the entire set this means that this set z6 becomes a cyclic group and who is the generator of that set five bar becomes the generator of that set so by definition z6 is now a cyclic group and generator is five bar also if you observe carefully if you calculate the cyclic subgroup of one bar this is collection of all powers of one bar okay and therefore i will write one bar raised to zero bar one bar raised to one bar one bar raised to two bar one bar cube one bar fourth power one bar fifth power and so on what is one bar raised to zero bar one bar raised to zero bar is identity 
identities of z6 is 0 bar 1 bar first power will be 1 bar itself 1 bar second power will be 1 bar plus 1 bar and that will become 2 bar 1 bar cube will become 1 bar plus 1 bar plus 1 bar which is 3 bar this is 4 bar this is 5 bar and again 1 bar sixth power will become 6 bar which is 0 bar and this continues so this means that the cyclic subgroup generated by 1 bar is actually nothing but 0 bar 1 bar 2 bar 3 bar also 4 bar and 5 bar so this means that the cyclic subgroup generated by 1 bar is giving you complete z6 this means that 1 bar is also a generator of z6 so this means that a z6 has two generators what are the two generators so now in this example we have also observed that generator need not be unique in a group you may have more than one generators okay so z6 has two generators and who are the two generators of z6 the two generators of z6 are one bar is also generator and five bar so we got two generators of z6 and z6 is therefore what z6 is a cyclic group if you can find any one generator in that group that group immediately becomes a cyclic group